Hi and welcome, I'm Steve Martorano and this is The Behavioral Corner. You're invited to hang with us as we discuss the ways we live today, the choices we make, the things we do, and how they affect our health and well-being. So you're on the corner, the behavioral corner. Please hang around a while. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the behavioral corner. It's uh, it's me again, Steve Martorano, hanging on the corner and uh, hoping that we run into interesting people. And we, we do all the time because we're careful about this. The behavioral corner is... Um, about everything, because everything winds up affecting our behavioral health in uh, one way or another. It's all made possible by our underwriting partners, Retreat Behavioral Health. You'll hear more about them later on down the road. So before I introduce uh, our, uh, our uh, guest, uh, let me point out that this is something of a departure for us. I mean, this is not the sort of uh, topic you, you might associate immediately with behavioral health, but I think it'll become apparent uh, why. Uh, because it's uh, a kind of startling take on uh, the topic of sex work. And that's what we're going to be talking about. You may or may not be familiar with OnlyFans, an explosively popular website that has lots of things, but is generally thought of uh, in, in, in the area of um, adult content is the best way to put that. And we have a young woman with us now who uh, was on her row on, on, on a path towards a, you know, a successful career in uh, the law. She has a law degree. And at some point, uh, the path diverted, and she found herself uh, working as an independent contractor for herself, leaving the law behind and winding up on the site OnlyFans. We welcome Jasmine Jafar to the program. Hi, Jasmine. Thank you uh, for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to be here. Did I get most of that right? Yes. So, so uh, I graduated. I passed the bar. I actually worked for about six to seven months at a law firm and then decided that it wasn't for me. <laughs> after, <laughs> after, the rigors, after the rigors of the law. Uh, a law yes. Experience. Did all the yeah. hard work and then was like. <laughs> well, you know, I know you'll get into this a little bit, but it, it's not a surprise to me that overwhelmingly. Uh, people who uh, start out the way you did don't find out the law is not for them until after they've done all the work and have to exactly. have, to be, have to become a lawyer. You know, it's like exactly. Different. Yeah, it's not L.A. law or law no. and order. Yeah, it's and a different deal. So anyway, let's talk about your background before we talk about the site and what you do on it. Uh, you come from a uh, I, I, first of all Middle Eastern background, yes. um, and probably regardless of you know the location of it a background where your family might go you're going to do what tell us about mm-hmm. your background yeah so both of my parents are actually immigrants from iran um so I, i'm sure this is true for multitude of cultures but in persian culture it's very common that your parents kind of tell you okay do you want to be a doctor a lawyer or an engineer that's just kind of the three um just default professions. My dad's an engineer. My mom's a lawyer. My sister's a lawyer. And school kind of always came easy to me. I I like learning um, and I like school. So I was like, all right, well, out of those three, I guess I'll I'll be a lawyer. (laughs) And so I did everything I was supposed to do. I did really well in school, scored very well on the LSAT, got a full ride to a great um, school. And I always knew that I didn't, if want to work like, you know, a traditional law job eight to five. I I knew I saw my mom doing it while I was growing up really long hours, especially if you are working at a bigger firm, which kind of the goal for a lot of people. And then she broke off and has her own practice. But I just thought, Hey, this is, this is my life. This is the path that was set forth for me. And, and, and that's what I'm going to do. And, and everybody else in school was just happy. They were like excited to graduate. And I was dreading it. I even considered like, because law school is three years. I'm like, what can I do to like extend this? I'm like, can I go get an LLM? Can I maybe go, you know, just trying to do whatever I could to stay in school and not have to deal with the like, I guess, mundane reality of a nine to five. Um, because Not to mention having to tell your parents that you've changed your mind. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I think they like they were like, you know, you don't have to go into big law. You could do something else. They were trying to find ways for me to find like, because obviously you can do a lot of different things with, with a law degree. And they knew I actually love psychology. They're like, maybe you could do something with 
law and psychology, maybe you could go eventually get your PhD in um, psychology and stuff. Um, so they, they knew that I didn't want to do like what my mom and sister were doing, but obviously they never wanted me or expected the the shift, <laughs> the career shift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, uh, you threw a, uh, you threw them a real curveball. ball. Uh, yes. There's no, no doubt about that. Um, tell us how you found out about OnlyFans. And yeah, what is so, it? Oh, yeah. So um, 2020 pandemic hit. And that was kind of when OnlyFans started becoming very popular. Everybody was hearing about it. Um, I was still in school at the time. School had um, become virtual. So it was online. And I actually had no social media at the time. So pretty rare. But like, you know, I was I'm 28 now. I was I'm not sure. And I had never had an Instagram, never had anything. So it wasn't something that as soon as I heard about it, I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I didn't even think I could do it. I was like, I don't even have an online presence, you know, whatever. 2021 comes along. I graduated in May and I'm taking the bar in July. One of my other friends in law school was like, I have like a secret OnlyFans account. And I'm like, really? like, it was just so shocking to me. And she's like, yeah, and I, you know, I'm making a little bit of extra money, you know, and I'm like, well, how do you start one? And she kind of was like, this is what you do. And then you can promote yourself on Reddit, which I wasn't familiar with um, at the time, really even at all. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me just try it. I never thought it was going to be what it is today. And I'm like, you know, I'll have a little extra money studying for the bar. And then obviously I'll quit. I'll delete everything and go on my merry way to being a lawyer. Um, so I, I started it and actually took off fairly quickly. Um, and I was already like within like a month, month and a half making what I would make probably as a brand new associate. So <laughs> what, what, what is that? What is that? 60, 75,000 a year? Yeah. Yeah. Before you get licensed. So that's actually, I was making 75 a year before I got licensed and it got bumped up to a hundred and then it would have kept going if I. And how quickly did you get to that figure on only fans? I think my second month I already was making, I made like eight grand. And then by the third month it was 10. And then by the time I started my job, it was like 30, 50. It was just, it was such good money. And so I was like, Ooh, okay. So I was like, let me try to put off getting a job. I wasn't applying for anything. I would just tell my parents, Oh, pandemic, you know, like, and then a really great job opportunity fell into my lap, um, from an old externship I had done. And if I was going to go into the law, this would have been the perfect job for me. It was a great firm environment. Everybody was great. Like it, it was, I had actually a decent work-life balance and, um, I go to the interview, I get hired right away and I call my sister and I'm like, I got the job, but I don't know if I want to take it. She's like, are you crazy? What is wrong with you? Like, this is perfect. And she's like, I'm, she's like, if you want to do only fans, fine, just do it on the side, do both. So I was like, okay, let me do both. So I was living this like double life where it was like in the day I was, at, at the firm. And then at night I would come and I would film and I would interact with fans. I spent a lot of my weekends shooting and the, uh, it's been almost actually a year. It was a year ago that I was like, Hmm, like I, I, I just want to focus on my online content creating. What, what was your expectation when you found out your friend had a secret, it's hard to imagine a secret website but uh, what was your uh, what was your understanding of what she was doing on on OnlyFans that you might be able to do as well? Um, posting pictures and making some extra money, honestly. Yeah. So it was it was basically lingerie shots or full nudity or what was she? How far was she pushing the envelope? She she was faceless for the most part, and she was doing she was doing nudity. Um, I actually didn't start faceless. So I did like a big deep dive on whether or not I could get in trouble for this with the bar and you couldn't. Um, and I actually disclosed it to the bar because I still had to pass character and fitness and there's nothing they can really do about it. Unless is that, is that right? The, the bar's ethical code wouldn't bar bar uh, wouldn't prohibit you from doing something like this. They would have to argue that it's moral turpitude, which especially in this day and age, that would be their data. What they wouldn't want to touch that now firms have the complete right not to hire you over something like this. Of course. It doesn't align with their values. So that is, is kind of the issue was like, okay, you're not in trouble with the bar, but can you get hired? And would you get fired over something like this? And the answer is probably depending on where you work. 
Um, yes, but it wasn't going to impact my license. So because of that, I'm like, okay. And like, because it was so like Reddit, it was so low key. I'm like, it, it, you know, I, I wasn't super worried that, you know, it was going to blow up at that point and <laughs> impact my ability to get a job. Um, while I was working at the firm, I would get nervous. Like I'd have random days where I'm like, oh, I'm they find out. And I think that's one of the reasons that I ended up leaving. I was like, I don't want them to find out and fire me. So I'm just going to leave. And there is a divide between like the older legal, I guess it is still a conservative profession, especially the older generation, my generation, like, um, my, uh, mentor who was like, maybe like 35, 36, she didn't care. She knew about it. It's funny now that it's like blown up. And like I was in business insider, the lawyer in the office next to me, he's like, like, I don't know, 50 something Mormon guy. He texted me. He's like, Oh, this is great. Like things are changing. Um, and, but I knew that the partners would, it, they are still of the old generation and they would have a big issue with something like this. They would probably have, it would seem to me they would have an issue um, that at the, at, the, at the very least uh, that went to the issue of your competency as a lawyer, uh, even if they could get past whatever moral mm-hmm. objections they had to a, an associate posing semi-nude or nude on a website they would seem to me go, yeah, but she's going to project a, a uh, image of, uh, you know, a side of not, not a good lawyer. A good lawyer wouldn't. Be yeah, you know, lawyer. it's it's of the same cover your tattoos, come off professional. It's not professional. I completely understand that. So that would be something that if, you know, you're, you're hiring an associate, you don't want the associate who's representing your firm to come off as a yeah. professional. There's actually yeah. a judge, I don't know if you heard, who also had an OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, it's a, the more I delved into it, the more I realized that it's remarkable. Uh, two things are remarkable. There are all kinds of women that are doing this, maybe men, too. I don't know. Uh, yeah. and, and they are, as you are, uh, unabashed about talking about it. So, yeah, uh, I think OnlyFans. The, so sex work is like a big umbrella term and it's like a spectrum, right? Because it, people from it goes. It encompasses everything from people who are working the streets, you know, to mm-hmm. dance to porn stars. OnlyFans was a is a form of sex work that's so easy. It's like you're just in your room. It could be, you know, so the local barista, a lawyer, whoever can kind of get into it. And so it's brought in a lot of people into this industry that would have probably otherwise never gone into the sex work industry, like myself included. So it is becoming kind of mainstream, especially as, as time goes on. Um, and that's what the other attorney that my mentor even said, she's like, yeah, I don't think this will be even the problem, the problem that it is now. I don't think in 20 years it, it's going to be that. And I, I agree. Well, let's, let's, uh, well, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, two or 300 years older than you. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know that I will make it to that moment where it's ordinary. Uh, we're certainly not there now, uh, no. but conversations like this are are fascinating and i know you said you had a psych background in college as well and so we'll delve into that a little bit but the nuts and bolts of this thing are are uh, just um, fascinating to me while you're on the down low with this with this deal um do you you know do you worry that you're going to be in a uh, you're going to be buying coffee one morning and some somebody's going to go oh i i'm follow you on the only fan. Did that ever happen to you? Or were you worried it about it? in a in and out drive through once. <laughs> I think. Okay. <laughs> I think that the, the person um, behind the window was like probably like 18, 19. And he's like, oh, I see you. I, I'm like, okay, cool. Like that doesn't really bother me. I do sometimes get people that recognize me and then they'll message me later and be like, I think I just saw you. They don't actually like have the they're too nervous to say anything in person. I also don't really go anywhere. I'm introverted. I stay home all the time. So it's, and I'm not, you know, (laughs) okay. So like I walk outside and the paparazzi's like, Hey, you know, and that's kind of the case with all kinds of content creators, I guess, in the sense, if you're asking me that, because the nature of what I do is explicit, if that part bothers me, that people are seeing me in an explicit way. And while I'm home, I feels like I have to screen and I have like this kind of I feel safe. And then if I'm out and I'm actually confront the people, 
that doesn't, no, I don't think it, as long as the person didn't make me feel uncomfortable, if they were just like, Hey, I'm one of your fans. I don't think it would bother me at all. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, we should uh, mention uh, that this is a subscription based business model. Uh, it's not available to just everybody, uh, uh, free. You have to subscribe. Um, you promote it on other social media platforms, Reddit, you mentioned, um, um, and so the growth was explosive. You left the law. You're now doing this. At what point did you tell your parents? I actually told my parents before I started the new job. So I already knew they weren't talking to me at the time. Um, but actually when I started, when I worked at the, the, when I got that job, they both texted me and they were like, Oh, it's so good that you're getting this job. Now you can leave that world behind. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not leaving that world. I'm just going to do both. You know, um, I am pretty headstrong and I didn't have a problem with what I was doing. It didn't conflict with my values and my morals. I knew it conflicted with theirs, but it's my life. And I wanted to live a life that was conducive. To me. Did you, uh, did they, they've seen the site? Uh, no, my parents are not like, my dad's barely knows how to get on Google. I'm not, he's not. Well, you could have, you could have helped him. Uh, but I could have, uh, yes, but I, I wouldn't probably direct him to my OnlyFans account, but they, they know, I guess, somewhat the nature of it. Again, they come from a conservative Middle Eastern country. They're not super familiar with like, uh, like, you know, they think like bikini pics, like my dad, if he sees a bikini pic, he thinks it's nudity. So I don't think <laughs> it even could comprehend the kind of stuff that's going on on OnlyFans. Now we kind of have a don't ask, don't tell kind of policy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I and can so, say it would be a bridge too far for lots of dads. And moms, yeah, I, I, I know me and me and my dad are very, very close. Like we are he, my best friend. I'm such a daddy's girl. We talk every day. So, um, which is a, a misconception about sex work too, right? Oh, daddy issues, blah, blah, blah. Like the only type of daddy issues I have is that my dad like probably spoiled me a lot. Like that's like, that's not that he wasn't at, he wasn't there, none of that. And so now we're at a point where like, you know, I just moved into this house like a month ago. He set up my ring light, everything. Like he just, you know, he, and, and I am trying to get into he other set up. He set up your, your ring set light. Set up my ring light. Yeah. I think in his head, he just is like, I, cause I, it is true that I'm trying to get into more like other forms of content creation, social, political commentary, et cetera. So I was telling him that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to try, you know, to do more YouTube videos, blah, blah, blah. And I think in his head now, he's just seeing it as like, that's what she's doing. She, she's yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. avoiding the. Yeah. It sounds like he's uh, observing you applying the skills he always hoped you would use in your life. Only you're doing it in this context rather than a context he expected. Exactly. And I do bring that to my fans. So I even sent him a couple of messages that I got and I get messages like this every day, like, oh, you know, the book you recommended really like changed my life. Or, you know, we, we, every Monday I get on, um, I get on Twitch and I discuss some type of topic and then I go live on OnlyFans right after and do like a sexy live. So it's really interesting. So I like yesterday we did, um, like uh, the second amendment and, the constitution. So like I bring my nerdiness to my fans and, the, and I get messages all the time talking about that aspect of it or talking about how I inspired them. And my dad knows part of the reason I even wanted to get in psychology for so long is I've always wanted to help people. And interestingly enough, my sex work has been a vehicle towards me. That's allowed me to actually help and touch way more people than I ever could really with the law. So there's a, there's a uh, kind of a dovetailing here of the you know, explicit stuff that attracts attention, but also the uh, the ability to influence. I mean, influencing is a big deal. Uh, lots of people are making very, very handsome living uh, just as influencers. Our guest is Jasmine Jafar. She is uh, uh, she has her own uh, OnlyFans uh, site. She's doing ma- many other things um, on uh, social media. Uh, under the umbrella of the term she uses very freely, you've heard her say it, and that is sex work. Uh, you don't back away from that. Uh, it'd be easy for you to call yourself, well, I'm just a content uh, creator. Yeah, you, you, no. you, don't, you, don't, you don't back away from the sex work thing. Not at all. Not at all. I'm very passionate about being open about sex work and kind of breaking those barriers. That is part of what I try to do. So even 
doing those two lives back to back, I get a lot of subscribers that are like, well, after I heard you talk, you're actually really smart and this, and now it's kind of hard for me to see you in this sexual context. And I'm like, (laughs) well, why, you know, like why? And then once people get, once that's, people are exposed to that over and over again, then they're like, yeah, the more I got exposed to it, the more I realize it's not a big deal. That's kind of one of my, what I want to do with my platform. And yeah, you know, I, I, can, I can hear a certain customer, or certain subscribers say, if you'll pardon me, shut up and take your clothes off. Uh, and others, because it's just a turnoff for them. Why is she, why is she smarter than I am? I don't <laughs> No, I don't, you know. Uh, Too and, many. And others, but, and yes, others I mean, would go, I really like, I really like what she has to say. Um, and I don't care whether she has her clothes on or not. Do you know what your demographic breakdown is, men to women? Um, well, on OnlyFans, it's majority, vast, vast majority men, but a lot of couples actually subscribe couples. to me. And I have, I have some girls, but it is vast majority is, is men. Yes. And showing my personality and showing this is actually, if you look at the top OnlyFans girls, a lot of them are Twitch streamers. A lot of them are online social media personalities. What people don't understand is part of the reason OnlyFans is so popular and people subscribe to OnlyFans is because they want a connection with the creator, which you don't get in traditional mainstream porn. It also has the the, uh, benefit of, I mean, this is maybe the ultimate DIY thing I've ever seen, uh, because in fairness to the platform, there are many other things going on there beyond sex, uh, sexually explicit material. People are doing all kinds of things on only. I guess you can go there and find, you know, how to change, how to fix your carburetor on your car. Um, I'm as sure well you as can. Else. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jasmine, did you do, are you single now? Yes. Unattached? Yes, unattached. Do you, I've been single uh, since I started the platform. Any, what, what, has it had any kind of impact on your dating life or are you? No. And this is a common question that I get. I have never met anybody like since I've done this that has had a problem with it. Now, maybe it's also because the type of people I would normally go for are people that usually align with my values. I'm not, you know, trying to date somebody in the Bible belt. It's just not me. So (laughs) you would, you'd be surprised. I mean, it's 2023 and a lot of people are just like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with sex work and go for it. If I was you, I'd be doing the same thing. That's, the main sentiment that I get from men. Now online, you'll get a lot of men that are like, oh my God, I would never marry somebody like this. It's like, okay, well, I don't want to marry you either. But um, in person, I I never, it, it hasn't impacted my dating life at all. Let's um, talk about, you You mentioned briefly, you know, what you do uh, on OnlyFans. Um, you show, do you, do you reveal your, your face or no? Yes. You do. I pretty you much talk, reveal everything. <laughs> you, so it's so it's nudity in the complete in the end, nudity. Yeah. Is there a, a line you draw that you will not go over with regard to content? Um, if it's anything that makes me uncomfortable, or like um, any like if a subscriber asks for something and it's just not something I want to do, usually it's not because I think it's like it makes me uncomfortable. It's just like too weird or too like I'm just like I don't even know how to do this. You know, um, especially when I started, I was doing more like custom content. Now I don't really have time. And my following is really big, but well, what do you mean by, what do you mean by, you mean, uh, you take requests? Yes. Requests. So you would pay, like, if you wanted a five minute video, you would pay like $60 per minute when I was starting. And you, if someone would be like, Hey, can you do this? And can you, can you do this kind of role play scene for me? And so some of those I would decline. And I, if I was to get them now, I would still decline. Um, anything that I don't enjoy doing. Um, one thing I like to do with my platform is I want to be as authentic as possible. So if, you're asking me to do something that I don't want to do or I don't enjoy doing. I am no problems putting those boundaries. Right, 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 I don't have a boundary right. in place of like, I won't show this or I won't show that. I actually just started posting in February um, tapes with somebody else. So I'm, I'm full in. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry. Tapes with it. I mean, someone else in the, uh, in the. Yes. In the like video. posting, posting sex tape. Yes. Yeah. You, so you've, you've, uh, you've uh, provided you and, and a man or you and a woman yes. would do these things together. So yes. it's no hold, it's no holes barred as long as you're okay with it. Exactly. There's nothing that as my whole thing is, is if I'm comfortable doing it, I'll do it. There's stuff I'm uncomfortable doing. I don't have a moral opposition to doing it. I just don't want to do it. And sometimes yeah. I can't 
Yeah. You know, sometimes people are like, okay, can you do a scene where we're like on a boat? I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Like, no. <laughs> so like, <laughs> right. the boat won't fit in the studio. Do you yeah. have anyone help? You? So your father put up your, uh, your light ring, but you put a camera. It doesn't take much technical expertise uh, to do this. Do you have a crew that puts this together? You do it yourself. I have an assistant that helps me promote on different social media platforms, um, responds to some um, messages on my behalf, can like provide content to fans who are asking for it. But I make a, a point, which is very different from other creators that are as big as me on there. I don't have anybody have conversations with my fans on my behalf and create like this parasocial relationship. I don't think that's ethical and that's not how I want this is even if I could make more money doing it. So, um, I just have, I'll either be talking to my fans or I'll have somebody just answer like simple, like how much is this? How much is that? But I'm not going to have somebody pretend to be me, go, go in there and someone, how's your, yeah. you know, telling you about their life and their marriage yeah. or whatever, and they think they're talking to me and they're talking to someone else. I don't find that. Yeah. There's a lot of that that goes on. People. There's a lot of that that goes on. How many followers do you, how many subscribers do you have? Um, I don't know how many are active. But like 11, 12,000 probably that are active, probably have at over 80, 90 since I've started. What does a subscription cost? Subscription is only $6.99 and then you can buy additional. So every other day I drop a video and you can buy, like it's a longer video, you can buy that video. I do live stream. Um, I get tips. So subscription is just- You one get way tips to- as well. Uh, yeah. And how is the, how is the, how is the money- uh- transacted they a credit they use credit cards to pay you is that how it works yeah it's through it's through only fans and only fans isn't the only way that i make money so i run a snapchat premium where people can cash at me to get on or, or whatever um i have built like personal relationships with fans who will just send me money it's a completely not related to only fans they like find me on reddit whatever um and but on, through only fans it's just um through the platform yeah, you know, I uh, boy, this is the first opportunity I've ever had to ask the questions like ask this in your business. Yeah, ask me anything. Um, it would, what about the uh, being able to separate uh, a sex act, sex acts, in a work context uh, from a personal context? Uh, do you have any? I mean, it's got to be. It's a different experience when you're with someone privately, right? Yeah. So like, for instance, the person that I'm having sex with on camera, we have sex on our own too sometimes, you know? So it just like, we could just be into it. And then all of a sudden we'll get out the phone and we'll start recording. So I, I don't really notice like much of a, like, I don't feel like I'm, I'm just so comfortable with it. Like I'm comfortable having sex and having other people see it personally. It doesn't make me feel weird. It doesn't make me feel um like it doesn't change anything for me is there it are- more is it more exciting for you thinking about people watching you? um not not necessarily sometimes and that's why like we don't film every time there are times where we're like having we, where we've had sex and he's like do you want to film it and i'm like no i don't feel like filming it right now other times i'm in the mood to film it right so and i'm i, I think it's hotter to film it so it just depends on my mood um even the solo stuff i would do like I would not film it unless I was in the mood to film it. And that's yep. one of the good things about OnlyFans is I don't have a boss. It's just me. So if I'm not in the mood, I won't film it. There are a lot of times where I'm like, oh, you know, I should put a video out, but I, I don't feel it. I don't feel like it. And that's okay. Um, so you really feel, I know you do. I can tell from just uh, this conversation and what I've read that the entire uh, notion surrounding sex work will ultimately move out of the, uh, sleazy and dangerous realm or maybe it'll never leave the dangerous realm certainly the uh, the salacious realm and mm-hmm. just become something people do now in public as it were virtually in public i mean um, it's going to be it's not going to be overnight i don't think but we no. are obviously moving in that direction now simultaneously we are getting pushback too right because anytime there's going to there's social change the opposition to that is more intense. Yes. So we're getting a lot of that as well, where which which we're seeing through the legislation that's being passed. It's been negative. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's you know they 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 always threaten every now and then to get the credit card companies and the banks to get out of this business of facilitating the transactions and then and it's worked credit. a couple times. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. say this with OnlyFans, it's the it's it, there's an ethical component too. 
because on OnlyFans, everything is verified. Like I have to be verified. Anyone that wants to come on my page, they have to send in their ID. They have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. They have to fill out a consent form. So when people are consuming this kind of content, if you get it through OnlyFans, not only is the money going directly to the um, person, the, the exploitation and all that, that is more rampant in the mainstream porn industry isn't happening here. You know, nobody's underage, you know, nobody didn't consent for their content to be out there. You know, it. so I feel like OnlyFans is moving it towards this model. Whereas like you used to just go on whatever free site and you had no idea what the hell you were watching. Um, so so you're kind of, you're, you are completely confident that no one is being uh, exploited. No one is being coerced. Um, no one is being I don't like forced to, into this. I don't like to speak in absolutes. So I'm not saying that nobody has ever been exploited and, and you know, somebody could have an abusive partner. It's forcing them to be on OnlyFans. That's true. But when it compares to other forms of sex work, the exploitation is way less. Like if everything is so like we pay taxes, we all our information is in there. Um, we have very rigid requirements for bringing somebody else in. It would be a lot I don't, harder. I don't, I don't think OnlyFans is even, I think that's part of the reason they're so strict is like, and even now, like they'll go through and they'll start, if you have any infraction, they'll give you a strike and, and, and you can't be putting just random people on so there. So you can't get through, you can get thrown off the site, I guess, right? You can. And a lot of people get thrown off the site. Yeah. If you, and anything about meeting up in person or anything, which I, I never do. And I never wanted to do. That's not allowed. You're not even allowed to sell or ship fans like your bra and underwear. Like they, they have, they're very strict. This is strictly online virtual content creating for people that are 18 and older. You need a credit card to get in the site. You have to be, um, it, I think it, as safe as we can get it. And it's in that context that you said in a couple of interviews you've done, uh, that uh, contrary to what has historically been the case with women in sex work uh, and uh, substance abuse, uh, depression, uh, anxiety, uh, this experience you believe will reverse, if not eradicate that context and allow you to be in control of everything so you wouldn't necessarily suffer psychologically you be, you believe that right i would say that i would I, my mental health was and would be worse if i was a lawyer i mean you know this too lawyers have a high rate of substance abuse depression suicide etc it's one of the unhappiest professions you can be in so for me personally sex work has been i have time i have freedom i feel in control i'm in control of the content i put out i feel like my work is meaningful and i'm touching lives i this is i love my job and so I don't have those, those negative, now that doesn't mean nothing ever goes wrong. That doesn't mean I don't, I don't have bad days. It doesn't mean every single day is so, I wake up every day and I'm like, I am so empowered, blah, blah, blah. There are bad days too. There are days where I'm like, I don't feel like doing this. There are days where like, you know, you get banned off a lot. That's probably the hardest part is just the treatment we get from social media platforms. You're getting banned. You're getting deplatformed. It's like, we're struggling. The legislation that's being passed is sometimes going to harm us like that's that's difficult um you don't have like there's no like hr or anything like you're on your own kind of um mm -hmm. but the actual work i do i i don't feel like it it is having those negative like i said sex work is a is like so yes if you're and i do think that like a lot of times when people talk about the negative impacts of sex work, they are looking at it from the perspective of like, oh, the, the people that are in the worst position, like the people walking skid row that are addicted to drugs. Yes, but that's one form of sex work. And that can go from anything to people like me that are making six figures a month, living a great life with a bunch of time, freedom and money and happiness. So, so it's, a, it's a, you know, one of the major goals in life is to, uh, do something that you find meaningful and makes you uh, happy. You're living your best life as a sex worker. Is that what you? Is that what your position? Yes, is? I feel. I feel very. It warms my. What I do actually warms my heart. So I always get all the time like, "Oh, do some. You need to contribute to society." I can't believe you left your job as a lawyer where you were contributing to society, and now you're not. And no, I didn't. Like, I mean, my job. A lot of it had to do with helping 
wealthy people avoid paying taxes before. Like it wasn't like I would come home every day and be, oh, I'm so fulfilled. Now I get, now I feel like I, I'm touching, I'm impacting lives. I'm changing people's perception of sex work. I get messages like that all the time. I'm showing people that it's not a last resort. It's not something people do just because they have no other options. It's, I'm trying to get rid of that stigma. And that to me is a mission that makes me feel fulfilled. It makes me excited every day. Now you're a remarkable uh, spokesperson for that. Can I offer, I'm sure somebody's done this, but can I offer you a title for the next uh, thing you want to, you should call what you're doing the naked truth. <laughs> would be a great I love that. Though. I love that, that. I like that? Okay, you can have yeah. that. Yeah. Let me ask you this, and finally, uh, with regard to the nature of social media and the internet, which is, you know, once it's digitized and out there, it can escape. And, you know, you, you, the model you've talked about puts you in control working with your partners at OnlyFans. But we, there are, according to what I read, examples of content that escaped, got hacked, Leak. and it's now in uh, the standard porn sites. Is that? Yes. Uh, yes, that, that does started? happen. Yes, that does happen. A lot of us models, we work with um, companies that will scan the internet for it and we'll mm-hmm. do GPA takedowns. So, no. I, I wouldn't tell anyone if someone's like, I want to start an OnlyFans, but I want to be sure nothing will ever get leaked and blah, blah, blah. But no, that, that's a possibility. That's a reality of the industry that you're in. Um, and yeah, you can get the content taken down. Sometimes it's easier than others. You can get it delisted from Google. But I mean, the fact that people are seeing me naked doesn't clearly doesn't bother me. So I, I don't like if my stuff is leaked because you should be behind a paywall and I usually get it taken down. But I don't think that that is like, oh, my God, the Internet seen me naked. Like, that's- right. Right. Well, you know, I would I'm going to end this by, by I would have asked you uh, under different circumstances. You're 27, you say? Uh, 28. 28. I, under different circumstances, I would have asked you how much longer can you realistically do this? And then, of course, Martha Stewart shows up on the cover of Sports Illustrated at 81. So. You got a long run. Oh my gosh. I have women. I know women doing this. I mean, there's, and that's the great thing about OnlyFans is that you, and like Reddit, for instance, you can post in different subreddits for your aesthetic. So there are MILFs over 30, over 40, over whatever that people want to see that specific type of content. So yeah, you can do this for a long time. And like I said, I want to start, you know, moving into social political commentary. You can do that for a lot longer. Um, yeah, this is not something that, you know, you, you expire when you're 30 and you're not going to be made. A lot of women well into their 30s and some 40s are making a killing still on OnlyFans. Uh, Jasmine uh, Jafar, thank you so much. Um, it, 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 it's a terrific perspective on it. I look forward to the uh, reaction from our listeners on the Behavioral Corner to see what they think about all this. It's been an eye opener for me, if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, and, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, I want to uh, remind everybody, don't forget, like Jasmine, we love subscriptions. Just push the button and uh, subscribe to the Behavioral Corner. Follow us, like us, do that whole thing. And we'll catch you next time on The Corner. Take care. Retreat Behavioral Health has proudly been serving the community for over 10 years. Here at Retreat, We believe in the power of connection and quality care. We offer comprehensive, holistic, and compassionate treatment from industry-leading experts. Call 855-802-6600 or visit us at www.retreatbehavioralhealth.com to begin your journey today. That's it for now. And make us a habit, hanging out at the Behavioral Corner. And when we're not hanging, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on the Behavioral Corner.